Hello and welcome to a new episode of the other Russian or the mind expander or the guy that's losing his voice. Anyway, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, Russophobia. Right? What a topic. I mean, recently that, that motherfucker launched it. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, as I mentioned in my previous episodes. But, you know, I mean, in the psychedelic world, imagine that shit happening. So, what the fuck am I talking about? So, first and foremost, <laughs> it's just a hook that's gonna probably make you watch further. But we'll see. Just put it in the comments what you were thinking. I need some feedback here in order to be able to understand like what exactly I'm doing that shouldn't be doing or maybe should be doing whatever any feedback so go to the comments tell me what you think but yeah I'm talking about psychedelics um, so I'm continuing my studies and I've uh, recently worked on my telegram channel and probably some people who joined the um, YouTube channel after that because I don't use social networks except for LinkedIn probably and well I'm still using Twitter but X or yeah and a bit of Insta so what the fuck am I saying here yeah hypocrisy you know those humans double face motherfuckers anyway so going back to the topic that I've originally pointed out there it's gonna be a small episode on the history of um, psychedelic mushrooms rediscovery because they were known to humankind for quite a while and uh, if you look back to the historical data that's available there you can find some archaeological discoveries that would say that the mushrooms in that or this form were consumed roughly like 6,000 years ago but yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, double check my fucking facts and put it in the comments if you think otherwise. Uh, anyway, 2,000 years, give or take, here and there, it wouldn't make a difference. The point here is that humankind, homo sapiens, been using mushrooms for quite a while. And of course, don't forget about the stone date theory that is out there. So anyway, relationships with, between the homo sapiens and theogens are long-lasting, are lasting for millennia, and you kind of just discover it, it's been there for a while. That's why I'm saying rediscovery, because it was because it was a bit of a different approach here. And I don't remember if I uh, talked about this before, because sometimes I kind of lose understanding of what I've already covered here and there, because when I'm recording it in Russian, it's a fucking double job, man. I mean, just... Sometimes I think like, what the fuck am I doing? Like just uh, doing that blogging and then doing it double languages, which is like fucking nightmare because it requires a lot of attention, a lot of time, and eventually it affects my other parts of life, <laughs> like business that I cannot attend to, or sometimes a relationship. But hey, therapy is working and helping, so definitely uh, would advise if you are facing relationship issues. So anyway, going back to the topic, I was talking about um, Valentina and Valentina Gherkin. It's her maiden's name, as they say properly. But her husband's name is Wasson. So Valentina Wasson and Gordon Wasson, they were the couple. Uh, but yeah, originally Valentina, she was born in Moscow back in 1907 if i'm not mistaken here but yeah roughly in that area and left russia for apparent reasons i mean the revolution uh well yeah not maybe the most apparent but yeah it is pretty big one for people back in the day to leave a country is something like significantly fucked up happening so <laughs> yeah the bolsheviks came to power uh, her family, uh, I don't know, mother or father, it's not, they're not that mentioned out there, the history, but, but I guess you can find it out there and look for yourself because I'm not that deep into the topic. I don't know that much as, you know, experts, but I can, you know, send you resources here and there and I got a, a nice Myra map that I'm still working on. It's a work in progress, but I think I'll be able to put it out there in the comments for in the description. So if you um, notice me not doing it, just put it there and I'll get back to you. But anyway, <clears throat> so going back to Valentina, some uh, pomegranate juice here. So Valentina, she um, went to get a, a degree. Uh, I 
not sure what the field was, but she was a pediatrician, basically working with children. But she was also a mycologist and, um, well, more of an enthusiast, but still. So anyway, and uh, her husband was a banker. Uh, was He was working in one of those big uh, investment banks. So Valentina and Gordon had conversations around uh, mushrooms, but not psychedelic mushrooms in the first place, just, you know, regular mushrooms. And <clears throat> at some point in time, they went on a honeymoon to Catskills in US. It's like mountain area, but not that good in geography. So just go check it out where it is. They went there and uh, Valentin noticed that there are mushrooms that are growing on that continent that were extremely similar to the ones in her motherland, uh, Moscow. Uh, well, Mother Russia back in the day. So anyway, she got interested and um, decided to kind of dig further and understand uh, what the fuck, how is this possible? Because it is across the ocean basically and it's kind of same mushroom. She started to study the topic and uh, gather data where she could and her husband originally wasn't sharing that um, excitement at some point in time they started to talk about mushrooms and uh, Valentina came up with the theory that garden is more of a mycophobic whereas her is mycophilic and my feel and fob are Greek roots, so you feel if you're like um, love something, it is something that you are fond of in a sense. But anyway, going back to the phobic, so she loved mushrooms, right? That's why she was a mycophilic, and she called Gordon mycophobic. And she had a theory about the Anglo-Saxon, uh, the kind of Slavic type of people, which is, in my view, complete bullshit because the, nowadays Anglo-Saxonian is being used by Russian propaganda machine to, I don't know, kind of paint a entire enemy in the face of like Western community, and this is called like Anglo-Saxon world, which is like pure bullshit. Especially when you start to think in terms of division of human beings into special like segments, parts, like put uh, them in the boxes or something like that. It is awful. I mean, we're all one species, so what the fuck. The theory there is that she, because of her like ancestry roots or the cultural context that she was living in, she had loved mushrooms. And whereas for garden, it was a bit different story. So... They started to dig in and they've uh, found out at some point in time, eventually, about a sacred mushrooms rituals happening in like South America, more towards the Central America, in the region of Mexico and uh, yeah, somewhere there. So they've heard about like uh, mystery rituals that are happening there with local healers and shamans or curanderas. So they decided to hop on a journey and go there. And uh, yeah, Gordon, he uh, found the person who was responsible for those type of rituals. Or Valentina, I don't remember. That's not the point here. So they found Maria Sabina, which is a local curandera. And uh, she was doing those rituals. And the rituals basically describe the approach... Uh, that it is, is happening so people go to her she gives the mushrooms and then you know they basically trip and come out of it with the answers to the questions they had prior to that journey basically but somehow that ritual was also used for finding something someone and uh yeah so to uh, uh people with different color of their skin came uh basically two whites came to the center of america and the, the, the skin color is different yeah. talking about hypocrisy right I don't know, dividing but yeah anyway those are just features it's not like any type of division or anything but anyway so he found Mary, maria sabina and uh convinced her to make a ritual to kind of allow him and her spouse Valentina to participate in that ritual. So they did, uh, they tripped basically, and then uh, they went on their business. Of course, it was a revelation for them. 
So what, why I am saying, of course, because people who typically like experience microdose of mushrooms, they tend to say that this was one of the most remarkable like experiences in their life. And I'm not promoting consumption here by any means. I'm just uh, quoting the data from the studies. So uh, there is this experiment called uh, Good Friday. You can Google and uh, watch a uh, documentary for yourself and, uh, you know, decide for yourself, basically. So they went on with their business, but they were so excited about it. So that they wanted to spread the knowledge, share the information and uh, the magical experience that they've had. And at some point in time, Gordon published a, an article in a magazine, the name of which I don't remember. Valentina published an article in the magazine that I don't remember. Is this either like Life Week or I don't remember. Anyway, so the links are there on uh, my map. And from that point, uh, the world has never been the same. So it kind of sparked a new revolution or a rediscovery of um, mushrooms and their effect on human psyche. And unfortunately, Maria Sabina experienced some issues because of what happened. So she kind of introduced the uh, Western world to mushrooms because it was all beforehand part of the indigenous cultures of South America or Central America. And as of then, other people were able to participate in this. And of course, they started to write those articles. Immediately, a huge amount of attention uh, was addressed to that region in Maria Sabina specifically. A lot of uh, tourists and people who were planning to experience whatever they described Gordon and Valentina in their publications, they just uh, went there in crowds. And... Well, of course, they messed up the local, like, flora, fauna, whatever. But yeah, it was a massive impact for which uh, Maria was blamed. But over the course of time, you know, the society and the, the rest of the community in the world were, was expressing the gratitude to Maria Sabina. But yeah, she went through a lot of suffering for allowing those uh, people and uh, one Russian lady and one British uh, gentleman to participate in those ancient midnight rituals. So why am I saying this to you is because I want to convey the message that this is, well, I've, first of all, there are two messages here. The one that I've hmm, pointed to you in the very beginning, and there is another one. So the revolutions or actually kind of rediscoveries happen when people share the information, spread the knowledge. One of the greatest I don't know, mistakes or of humanity or like tragedies was Alexander and library because a lot of data just died and the knowledge evaporated with it. And we probably don't know what was there, like even 50% of it. So what I'm saying here is that it is important to share the knowledge, to spread it out further and uh, help people understand more nuances. But of course it is always important to double check the sources to use your critical thinking, judgment, to understand that different people say different type of shit through the prism of their own reality. Uh, myself, includingly, is not an exclusion here because I said, you know, double-faced nature of the humankind. So I, I do have my own view, my own perspective. However, you need to always check facts. But spread the fucking knowledge. People need to know. That's why just like, subscribe, share, do... Get it out there. It is important that people know and that the topic is not that tabooed any longer. This is one of the biggest problems of like human progress in general is that people limit access to knowledge and people cannot use this knowledge to progress further. So, hence why I'm doing all this. Because originally I started as of just, you know, heading somewhere and eventually I found my way into psychedelic or entheogen world right so it's not uh, global warming it's global climate change but this is as important probably more because if psychedelic uh, renaissance eventually dies off probably it's gonna impact in my view it's gonna impact uh, mother earth in a bad manner because i do believe that if people 
who run the corporations who are basically running the world would have experienced that at least once in their lifetime, but not like occasionally in a therapeutic context. So remember two protocols, so recreational and therapeutic. So I'd go for therapeutic because recreational is extremely dangerous in many ways if you don't know like basic safety measures. That's why those are fucking critical. So go watch that video that recorded. It's not going to be perfect in terms of like, it's not completely exhaustive, but there's like fundamental safety measures that you definitely need to take into consideration before attempting to contact with entheogens. And again, I'm not ad advocating for their use recreational, I'm just informing you that it is important. So therapeutic protocol is different. And if those people were to experience that, they would have made decisions that would be in favor of Mother Earth rather than against. So they would be more conscious because in those states, people have this feeling of connection with the entire ecosystem of our planet. Oh, by the way, this is not like something that I've imagined. This is out there in the data. And if you want to, well, first of all, just go there and search information for yourself or, you know, put it in the comment, I'll probably get back to you. Going back to the original topic of Valentina and the Russophobia. So I told to you that that kind of phenomena happened and it is probably, in my view, again, one of 8.3 billion people on Earth is due to the actions of one particular individual that, you know, decided to end the people's lives. So, which is stupid in my view. I mean, people should be given the right to end somebody's life. Life is extremely valuable and it is critical to understand for the entire humankind. Because if it was like common sense, which it is in my view, people would have made stupid decisions, but they do. Although there was a recent publication, or actually a book by uh, Robert Sapolsky, I haven't read it yet, but the guy is saying he's a neuroscientist at Stanford, if I remember correctly, but he's talking about the concept of free will and it doesn't exist. So basically everything is predisposed for each and every one of us to make this or that decision. It's very kind of interesting topic, well, in my view at least, because a lot of people right away started saying, what the fuck are you saying? Of course I have free will. I mean, you know, that, that's the teaching through all the religions and shit like that. But yeah, it's very controversial. But yeah, a recent interview that I watched with him made me kind of consider the logic behind it and it kind of resonates with me. So still trying to process that shit because if I don't have free will, probably I wouldn't have... Um, done this or would have because it's predisposed shit there's there's like serious philosophy here so going back to the uh, original terminology of that word phobia and feel like what happened is that over the course of uh, history of the 20th century and 21st following uh, there's been some evidence gathered uh, in spite of all the limitations, in spite of all the restrictions, in spite of all the barriers to knowledge. So in spite of all this, Valentina got mentioned, got her part in history. And uh, hypocrisy in all this is that, well, probably you understand, but if you don't put it in the comments, I'll get back to you and explain further, is that you can go to Wikipedia and find Valentina Wasson, W-A-S-S-O-N, if we probably pronounce correctly. And you can find a page in English and Spanish, and which makes sense. Arabic is still interesting. <laughs> I don't understand the logic behind it, but yeah, fuck it, why not? But it doesn't exist in Russian. <laughs> so this is one of the reasons I'm doing all this is to spread the knowledge so that people here for themselves check the fucking facts and I don't know, just be more open-minded, be more willing to 
acquire new information. So there are situations where people feel like extremely stressed because they cannot talk about a specific topic. And yeah, talking about the restrictions recently in Russia, they've uh, outlawed LGBTQ plus community because it is a terrorist organization. All right. So those are the laws, like official laws of the country. And recently a person uh, got in jail for seven years for changing like price tags in the store, trying to deliver the message about the consequences of ending humans' lives. Well, just Google, check it out, see for yourself. I'm not bullshitting you. And yeah, I mean, this is the reality where a lot of popul people live. Well, a lot, if you, you know, compare with 8.3 billion, not that much, but still plenty. So hopefully I'm doing a something that would be valuable in the future, maybe. <laughs> At some point, that's like a time capsule, you know, for some point in time when uh, people decide to kind of open up uh, those fucking walls, demolish them, break the fucking walls. And at some point in time, probably somebody's going to listen to that shit and uh, make uh, decisions for themselves. Because I recently discussed this in uh, one of the groups in, in the Telegram channel, which is dedicated to neuroscience. And they've been talking about uh, social rise and depression. In the comment section, I put that the psychedelics are being um, discussed in the global world as a tool to treat PTSD and various types of forms of depression and not only. And the administrator of that group said that I shouldn't be talking about that shit because some of the administration of that channel still resides in Russia. So it is a taboo topic and it's like insane. I mean, this is information. So if you get information, what's going to happen? Somebody's going to knock on the door and ask, why are you doing it? Like, what is your interest? I'm not selling anything here. I'm just informing people. I'm just sharing the knowledge that that's the goal. Information should not be illegal because if you cannot access it, uh, where is the human progress happening? And I do hope that through the attempts of individuals of all those 8.3 billion, we're eventually going to get there and break the wall of misunderstanding, break the barriers between each other and uh, fucking work together to solve big, big problems. So on this note, I'm going to end here. And thank you for watching. If you ever decide to support what I'm doing here, just click like share, comment, donate if you want to. But yeah, let's spread the knowledge so that people are more collaborative rather than competitive. Thank you for watching. 